In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is the third Sunday of Kiyah. And today we read a passage from Luke chapter 1. You know in Kiyah we read from Luke chapter 1. And in this passage we hear about the, the visit of St. Mary to Elizabeth. We hear about the visit of St. Mary to Elizabeth. And this visit is something that was very amazing, a spectacular visit, because on this way, it was what's amazing about this visit is that where St. Elizabeth was from where St. Mary was was a very far distance. It was like almost 100 miles, or 80 to 100 miles. And you can imagine that, you know, in that time, that after St. Mary had received such a good word, that then she went immediately to go serve her, her uh, re relative Elizabeth, who was already pregnant, because, and she knew this from the angel. The angel told her, behold, your, what was impossible for God, your relative Elizabeth, she is now pregnant and barren, or who was barren is now pregnant. And so St. Mary was filled with, wow, if this is, because the angel had told her some amazing stories too. So she said, wow, if Elizabeth is pregnant, I'm going to go serve. So St. Mary went to go serve. And when St. Mary went to go serve, there was an amazing dynamic that happened. And it, I could just describe it in one like, sentence, is that it was full of the praise of God. Full of the praise of God. Full of the praise of God. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the praise of God. How do you describe the praise of God and what is the praise of God? I think we can define the praise of God. We define the praise of God as the natural response. The natural response of the soul or of the person to the grace of God. The natural response of the soul to the grace of God. It means that when one is filled with the Holy Spirit, when you feel the grace of God in your life, then the natural response is then to praise God. And this is what St. Paul, he says in Ephesians chapter 5. He says, be filled with the Spirit. Great. You're filled with the Spirit. Then what? He says, speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making a melody in your heart to the Lord. We see that singing and making melody in our heart is the natural response to being filled with the Spirit. If you are filled with the Spirit, then you will be singing and making melody in your heart. And I like that verse, melody in the heart, because if you, like, um, if you take a stethoscope, if you took a spiritual stethoscope and you put it on the heart of a Christian person, what would you hear? Normally, you put a stethoscope on a person, you hear, da da, da da, da da, or whatever a heartbeat makes, uh, something <laughs> along those lines. But then, if you put a stethoscope on a Christian person, what would you hear? I think you hear something very different. You hear praises, you hear glorification. Let them pray. Just like, you know, one of the beautiful things about our Tazbah is like, you come and you stay here for six hours or whatever all night and then you go home and then what's like ringing in your head? Like I woke up this morning and I was just like, I felt like I'd never left Tizbaha, you know, maybe I didn't leave Tizbaha for that long, but just the stuff was just singing and making melody in your heart. That is the praise of God when it's just coming from the heart, something very natural, very natural. You didn't tell your heart to beat. Did you tell your heart to beat today? No, it just came naturally. The singing and praising of God just came naturally from your heart. This is the praise of God. And what's amazing about that is if you read the gospel of today, that's exactly what happened. It's written that when Elizabeth heard the greeting, heard the greeting of St. Mary, it's written that the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she spoke with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Where, where's that coming from? Where did that come from? Just one sound, one greeting from St. Mary spurred like a lot of... If you put that stethoscope on Elizabeth, you would hear a baby praising in the womb. Praising in the womb from a little infant. Even the little babies are praising God. 
This is the natural response of the soul to the grace of God. The natural response of the soul to the grace of God. That's why in the Old Testament, one of the praises that we hear in Tzbah is the praise of Moses and the Israelites when they crossed the Red Sea because they had seen God's power. When you see God's power in your life, what do you do? You praise God. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable things. When Jonah, when he was in the, in the fish, what did he do? Praise God. Because, wow, unbelievable God. You're an unbelievable God. Unbelievable. When the three youth were in a furnace and they were supposed to scorched immediately, what did they do? Started praising God. Started praising God. The praise of God is natural response to God's power. When God is working in your life, the natural response is for... What does that mean if you're not praising God? What does it mean if you're not praising God then? It means that maybe you're not seeing God's work in your life. Maybe if you put the spiritual stethoscope on your heart, you'd be flatlined. So you need cardiac arrest. We've got to go in with the defibrillator and be like, Shh. you know, to give you a little wake-up call, to wake up the praise of God in your life. Because even the babe leaped. That's amazing. And not only did the babe leap, then they went on. So St. Elizabeth goes, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is it granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things who are told from the Lord. Okay, so one praise. The next thing about praise is praise is now for everyone. You see, even the child, for everyone. Don't tell me just it's for the, the priests. Or don't tell me praise is just for the deacons. Or don't tell me praise is just for men. Or don't tell me praise is... Because sometimes if you want to teach Alhan to some people, you say, Oh, Alhan, not for me. Alhan and praise is for the other. And I just come and be a nice little attendant. No, praise is for everyone. Praise is for everyone. The other thing is that praise is contagious. Contagious. It's a disease. It's a good disease. A good disease. Of, but when one person is praising God, then the next person starts praising God. And this is exactly what happened in the Gospel of today. St. Elizabeth, she said a praise of God and said all those wonderful things. And then what did St. Mary say? St. Mary responded. It was uh, her response. She said, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. You see, one person praising God is contagious. Then the next person, what do they do? They just praise. It's different. I know nowadays people, they say bad things and then other people join in bad things. But this is the opposite. People saying good things and then more people saying good things. And she says, For he has regarded the lowly state of his handmaid. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he, has, he who is mighty has done great things for me. He who is mighty has done great things for me. I was thinking about praise being contagious. It's like the disease I was talking about. And I was remembering David and King Saul. There was a time in the life of David where uh, King Saul was starting to feel the, the jealousy in his heart. And so one time David was playing his harp. And that, oh, that's not how you play the harp. You play a kid. You play the, so you, he was playing the harp. And then... King Saul took his like, spear and tried to, to kill him. Then David fled. Then Saul was still angry. So Saul sent some people after David and to his residence. And David told his wife to like, put a fake person in the bed, like one of the movies, you know? So the messenger came. They found someone sleeping. They went back and said, David. And then Saul said, no, go kill him. So they went back and then found the thing. And then Saul got mad and said, why did you let David go? And then Saul sent other people to, uh, to, to kill David. And what's very interesting, something very interesting happened. 
when, uh, when Saul sent these messengers to go kill David. It's from Samuel 19. He says, So David fled and escaped and went to Samuel at Ramah and told him all, and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and stayed in Naoth, and it was told Saul say, to Saul, saying, Take note, David is, Na, is at Naoth and Ramah. Then sent, Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw a group of prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as their leader over them, the Spirit of God came upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. You guys understand what's happening here? People are going to kill David. And he, they go and they find David and Saul praising. Samuel. Samuel. Huh? Samuel. Saw, they went and saw Samuel praising. And w instead of killing David, what did they start to do? Started to praise. They got caught with the disease. The disease of praise. There it is. Strikes again. Okay? Then the next group, Saul's like, where would my messengers go? Wow, they were supposed to go and kill David. Okay, so he sent another group. So let's hear what happened to the group. He said, so when Saul was told, he sent other messengers. And they prophesied likewise. Then Saul sent messengers again a third time. And they prophesied also. Then he also went to Ramah and came to the great well. So he asked, where, is, where are Samuel and David? And someone said, indeed, they are over there in that place. Then the Spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to that place. And everyone just started praying and prophesying and praising. Praise of God is contagious. Praise of God is contagious. I hope that's a disease we're spreading. It's a good disease that I hope we spread. That the praise of God is always in our hearts to be thankful for what God has done in our lives. We don't want to be the flat line. You know, if you put the spiritual stethoscope on your heart, it should be one giving thanks, one giving praise to God. I don't think we give praise to God enough for all the great things that He has done in our life. Let's be like Elizabeth. Let's be like St. Mary, who were just so grateful about all the things that God had done in their lives. And glory be to God forever. Amen.